and we're back to another episode of Better Business. Today we have with us the lovely Miss King. Hello, hello. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate it, um, especially coming from where you're coming from and where we're at. Um, <laughs> We do want to shout out Alpha Pack Financial. Again, um, we've partnered with them, so we want you to check out their website, www.alphapackhub.ca, for all your soft paper and a few other things that are kind of coming up um, in terms of uh, development uh, with the Alpha Pack group. Uh, ultimately, we want you also to check out Nocturnal TV. Please go on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Miss King, your YouTube social medias, you want to plug us in real quick? Miss King's Kitchen, M S King's Kitchen, no M I S S, no M Z. It's just a Miss King's Kitchen. Right. Okay. <laughs> perfect. All right. So, with that being said, let's kind of just dive right into. Um, I guess let's start with, how did you even begin knowing that you enjoyed cooking, and what got you even into starting to cook? Well, to give me like to get started, like honestly, I started cooking at an extremely young age, like. I remember being like four or five, my dad was making me season up chicken and clean chicken, right? So I come from a Jamaican household, so we all know you have to clean your <laughs> right, chicken. Yeah, you exactly. know what I mean? So started at a very un- young age of being in the kitchen with my dad and with my grandma, and right off the bat, I loved it. And I didn't do so much as love cooking the food. I love what it did. Right. How it brought everyone together. Like... That was the best times growing up is when everybody was at the kitchen table together. Right. Or when everybody was in the kitchen talking, the bantering that's happening, the fighting, everything that happens in the kitchen, God knows. I love it. So I was like, you know what? I was always kitchen cooking for my girls. I always cook for my girls. I always have, like, you know, the big Christmas dinners mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff. And they're like, why aren't you doing this for other people? And I'm like, hey, guys, I don't want to, like, I don't want to make it so, like, I started doing it and I don't love it anymore, right? But at the same time, I want to be able to give these people the experience that I that I have. Right. And the love that I have for food because not everyone looks at food like that, right? Right. And I won't lie to you. Since I was a kid, I used to come home from school, pretend like I had my own cooking show and like be like whipping up like craft dinner like <laughs> and you, I make a wicked KD. Right, 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 right. That, okay? <laughs> um, but I used to come home, pretend like I had like my own cooking show and be like, Welcome to Miss King's Kitchen and do a full do the full show. Right. So I was like, you know what? That's where the YouTube basically came about. Cause my girl was like, Nicole, you're always pretending like you have your own show though. Like till this day, like I'm in the kitchen showing my girls what to do, how to do it. You know? Mm-hmm. It's like let's do YouTube. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's just do it. And I think right now, obviously, in a world where you can kind of have your own show with those platforms, it's a great idea that you kind of started there. So um, kind of walk through what your style is. Like, obviously, you come from a yeah. Caribbean home. But I'm sure after a while, in my opinion, yeah. you get tired of the Caribbean food all the time. So, like, what is your style? You so I'm blessed to say that I grew up in a very diverse neighborhood, mm-hmm. right? I grew up in Fairfield, Ontario. I was probably one of the like one of the few black people even there at that time, right? So being at home, for sure, I'm getting my Caribbean food nonstop, but then I going over to Carm's house, or you know what I mean? And it's like, why is your roast beef not cooked? <laughs> you know what I mean? So right. like, there was a lot of questions I had. So then I was like, you know, I'm gonna take some time and spend time with their moms in the kitchen. So that's what I did. So I had like Indian friends, Italian friends, Portuguese friends, and I literally spent time with them. When everybody was playing, I'm in the kitchen with their mom. Mm-hmm. I learned how to make fresh pasta with my Italians, uh, you know, with the no-nos, you know right, what right, I mean? Right, right. Like, I was rolling out pasta, making pasta sauce from when I was like, I don't know, like 10, 12 years old, from scratch. And like, I just took those opportunities of living in a very diverse neighborhood and having very like, you know, multicultural friends and being in everyone's kitchen. Right. So my style is, yeah, I'm Jamaican, 100%. Okay. But I give a twist on everything. So I give a twist on all those Canadian favorites from like pot pies. Why not do a jerk turkey pot pie? Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Like let's put twists on things. So um, I would say I'm Caribbean, but with the twist of that Canadian flavor. Okay, no, that's that's actually pretty dope. And I think mixing the two always make like something that's unique and something people have never kind of seen. Um, and just in regards to like 
I know you, you're saying your style is kind of mixed in terms of that. So, like, if you were to do, like, a catering event, as you do catering as well, yeah. um, what do you, like, you can do pretty much diverse menus or kind of how does that set up? 100%. Like, so for my menus, I, I like to, I don't like to just give food, right? So, yes, I do catering, but I like to give an experience. So, when I, when someone comes to me with wanting catering or I'm like, what are you looking for? Like, what is this even event for? Because if it's just, like, something where you're just, like, just throwing a few friends together just want to order a few platters i'm probably going to send you to go order some platters from mm -hmm. somewhere else mm -hmm. i want to make sure you're having an experience so if it's doing like a like I, I did like a wedding where it was like a full outdoor experience it was just barbecue food and i loved barbecue so i'm smoking different meats i have my smokers out i'm okay. you know what i mean like what is the experience you're trying to gain from this food so i can cook it i can cook just about anything okay i'm not gonna say i can't cook anything no, I, no. I, I, I like, and if I don't know how to cook it, best believe I want to learn how to cook it just for you. That's what you want. Right. No, and that, and that's amazing. I think obviously with the catering business, people sometimes want unique things or different things on the menu. Um, so just speak to a little bit about your business um, right now, how it's kind of like evolved, how you started, and where you're at with it today. Yeah. So Mitz King's Kitchen started out just as a YouTube channel. Um, and it, it was great, and I, and, I, and I love being in front of the camera. So, you know what I mean? Like, teaching people how to cook West Indian food, but kind of dulling it down a little bit, giving you that step-by-step, step. also giving it to you in a way that, like, if you don't have this in your kitchen, it's okay. What do you have in your kitchen? Because, mm. like, sometimes it's difficult to go out there and, like, buy everything that the menu consists of. Right. And sometimes you don't have the money to go out there and buy everything the menu consists of, right? So let's figure out what you do have in your cupboards and let's work with it. Right. So I, I have a few episodes like that as well, you know, like let's just go on what I have in my cupboard today. Let's whip it together, mm -hmm. you know? So we started out, out like that with just doing the YouTube channel and um, just exploring, you know, just me talking and, and, and exploring some of my favorite foods and bringing it to you. And then we went into having the opportunity to cook live. Mm -hmm. Uh, for during Caribbean festival, so that was wow. that was that was wicked. Like had the full setup, full yeah. stage. You know, got the lights, got the mics, had the audience, and so I started doing live cooking demonstrations. So I went for, did a few live dem uh, cooking demonstrations, and then I did um, some live shows as well for Rogers, right? Uh, for Christmas specials and stuff like that. So we started we started like doing a little, you know, moving around, and then people were like, "Okay." I'm tired of seeing your food on camera. <laughs> right. Does it taste good? I'm yeah. like, how dare you? Yeah. So then that's when the whole catering and giving people my experience. Okay. Bringing my experience to your home. You know what I mean? So that's when that part kind of started. And I also started doing um, dinner nights, which I love dinner nights. So basically with dinner nights, uh, people will subscribe. They're like, okay, you know, you get like 15 people together. I prepare the food, it gets sent to your house, and then we go online and I teach you how I cook the food that you're oh, eating. Oh, that's amazing. That's actually really good. And then we go through step by step. So we do the, you know, we do the app, we do the main, we do the dessert together. Yeah. So now you're eating the food, you know what it tastes like, and now you know how to make it. So I did a few dinner nights too. And those are super fun. And then with that, I'm telling you, man, I just kept on going and going. So when COVID hit, at the beginning of COVID, all I was doing is drinking a whole lot of wine. But then I was like, you know, maybe we'll slow down on the wine. And like, and I was cooking such heavy foods at the beginning of COVID. Because I just wanted comfort. I think we all wanted comfort Absolutely. at the beginning of COVID. Especially right? when that was all going on, right? So I made some amazing cream sauces, right? Mm -hmm. But then I was like, okay, things are getting a little bit too heavy. So I went on a really big fitness journey. And a healthy journey, like okay, let's 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 be healthy now. But I'm tired of this boring healthy food. Yeah, I'm tired of it. The chicken breast and the broccoli. The, the same, like the boiled the chicken same, breast. Yeah, the same. Like don't thing. put no seasoning on <laughs> right, it. Right, 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 right. Right. So I'm like, let's find ways to still eat healthy, but have it be sexy. Have have it still have that experience where you don't feel like, oh my gosh, I have to eat healthy to like, you know what I mean, like. Let's just make this, make this this whole journey of becoming healthy, every part of it, a good experience, right? right? So I started meal prep. I started meal prepping just for myself. I lost fifty pounds. Wow! Congrats! And, hey, let's clap for that. That's awesome. That's right? Awesome. During COVID too, right? Yeah. And so then people were just like, 
I want to eat what you're eating because clearly it's working. Right. So meal prep started. And it started with maybe about five or 10 people. And then I grew up to maybe having like 15 to 20 people a week, all getting six to 12 meals a week for me. Wow. Yeah, so, and then I started getting partnerships with different local gyms uh, in the Durham region and with different trainers on, again, just not so much as like, yeah, I want to be able to provide you the food to make sure you're eating clean, but I don't want you to be eating my food all the time right. like, or because I want you to be able to sustain this for yourself. So then be giving tips and tricks on, on how you can do this too. Because as much as it's benefiting my pocket, I want this to benefit you in the long run. Absolutely. So giving you that experience, I want you to take, I don't ever just want to give food. I want to give that experience, yeah. right? So that's kind of where meal prep kind of came about as well. No, that's awesome. And then just in regards to um, the actual business idea, talk to a little bit um, what it's like to be an entrepreneur and to kind of go off and start something like that. How do you even have the courage to kind of say, you know what, this is the avenue I want to go in and I'm just going to do it. Like, how do you even get there? I, it's, it, it, it's rough. It's, it's hard at the beginning, you know what I mean? Especially when you're coming from, uh, but me, for me personally, I come from a very corporate background, right? I went to school for business. I went to school for project management. I've been working in the fields for close to 15 years already. And so for me to be like, okay, no, you guys, I'm the entrepreneur. My whole family was like, <laughs> absolutely not climb up that corporate ladder and call it a day you know what I mean but again it came back down to that experience I realized like people were missing something when it came to food and I want to be that outlet for them right so I was like when it came to actually starting up the business I just did it to be honest with you I just did it like one day I was just like you know what forget it I'm just gonna do it right. I went out start pricing things out, start figuring out how much, you know, the, the containers would be, you know, that I just did it. And that's when I was still living at home with my parents and I said, yo, you guys can I use your kitchen to cook for, for people, you know what I mean? Like figure out how, how much time it would be in their kitchen and kind of broke them off a piece of it, you know right. what I mean? And it kind of brought the family in that way to make everyone kind of feel a little more comfortable. Like now you guys are getting profits as well. You know, you guys have a Absolutely. percentage in this now, you know what I mean? So. Honestly, when it comes to being an entrepreneur and getting started and how I did it, I just did it. Right. I just jumped in and I just did it. I feel like also for the cost-wise, starting out this business was probably a little bit easier because it wasn't that much overhead for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it was just, it was the kitchen. And so the, the real only overhead I had was just buying the supplies I needed for that moment of time. So I, I just kept my budget really small at the beginning because I didn't I always want to break even so I always make sure I always I always broke even at the very beginning um, I, I just didn't do too much overspending and you know I made sure I had reservations beforehand and just kind of went with the flow with that that's awesome and then just talk to like the the hardships or difficulties that come with the, what you're doing obviously that food space mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are passionate about food a lot of people want to do that a lot of people can cook yeah but they can't execute the business so just talk about the difficult part about it the difficult part, you know, finding clients mm -hmm. and even putting yourself out there that you're doing it is, is can be very intimidating and scary at times, you know, because people know me more as a bartender and as a business person. And yeah, they know I like to cook, but like for you to buy my food, now you're now you have the. Now I'm giving you the opportunity to critique me. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Oh, geez. Right. right. Exactly. So as much as I may think I'm hype. Here comes your critique, and, right. you know what I mean? Your comments and those type of things. So that was probably one of the biggest hurdles for me to get over at the beginning was, you know, people being honest with like, yeah, you know, that last ditch really wasn't it. Wow. But being able to handle that criticism, like you said. Yeah, and being able to take it, take it and don't not take it personally. You know what I mean? Especially as a starting, as an entrepreneur, I find that because we're so passionate about it, and we're so passionate about that, that starting process. You know, we're putting our hearts into it. We're just throwing everything into it. When someone comes at you with some a negative response, you have a tendency to take that very personally. And, and you could, that could discourage you to even continue, you know what I mean? But knowing that it, this is part, this is growing pains. It's just like if you were to be in a corporate life, your boss is going to tell you when you did wrong. Absolutely. You know what I mean? They're going to tell you places where you can improve. Yeah, you did this good, but this is how we can get to being great. And just being able to take that step back 
and take that criticism and being able to evolve from it, apply it, and evolve from it, what is is a huge part of like the starting. It's a huge part of being an entrepreneur. Period. Right. Like that part doesn't even stop. Right. So, as you mentioned that, I wanted to ask you, because I always have this argument with like different friends. Do you think food, in terms of the way things should taste, there's a standard, or do you think it's like people make a standard? So let's say you decided, like you said, to make a chicken pot pie. Yeah. Everybody grew up having their chicken pot pie differently, right? Right. If somebody comes to you now as a comment and says, you know what, Miss King, I didn't like yours because you didn't put this and this in it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that is criticism you should take and make changes? Or do you think it's just like, oh, I hear you. That's not how I do this one. Like, what do you what do you think about that? See, now, you have to be careful the way you word things, right? And, and the way, like, even the way I put out my food. Like, if you say traditional. Ah, okay. That's good. Right? Right. If I say I'm making a traditional pot pie, it better taste like the traditional pot pie. <laughs> right, 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 right. I just told you you're getting a traditional pot pie. If I tell you you're getting Miss King's pot pie, you're getting Miss King's. Ah, okay. I see what you're saying. It, you know what I mean? So it's, it's in the wording, in, in the way that you present it. If I say I'm giving you, uh, you know, an Asian style, it doesn't mean it's going to be exactly. Uh, it means I may be taking bits and pieces, but it's still going to be me. You're right. And, and I'm very clear with that as well. Well, when I put out my food and when I have people, I'm like, this is my version, mm -hmm. right? The way I make my oxtail is not the same way my grandma makes her oxtail. And I was going to say in the Caribbean home, but there's a standard <laughs> to the way, you know what I'm saying? The way there it is. should be made, and like, you know what I mean? And I won't look, like, yo, <laughs> at the beginning, especially when I first started, like, really cooking the West Indian food in my own household, my dad is the, is the cook in the house, right? So it's up to his standards. Uh. He is the standard, right. right? Grandma is the standard for certain things. So my dad wouldn't eat my food. Really? But oh, wow. his dad just wouldn't even eat my food more times. Right. Everyone in the house would be like, mm, lick your fingers. <laughs> dad, dad, did you want to try my stewed chicken? And he looks at it and too, he looks right? Like, <laughs> this stewed chicken, <laughs> you fry it down first. <laughs> Mm -mm, mm, I'm good. Right. Pass. Right. I'm like, wow. So you had the critique from even before you started doing it. Even before. Okay. You know what I mean? So I had to get over it. Like, so when my, I caught it, he snuck a piece of chicken. Mm -hmm. Yo, it made my heart just, you know? Of course. A one piece of smile went over <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's when also my dad realized, like, you know, you have your own flavor of cooking. Because I didn't grow up the same way he, he grew up. So my flavoring and my taste buds are different from his. So yeah, there is, there's a standard, and but it, it's in the wording you say. If I say, again, if I'm gonna be traditional, I'm gonna be traditional. If I'm gonna be Miss King, I'm gonna be Miss King. No, that's, that's a great answer. I like that a lot, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, I was also gonna ask you, just in regards to building your menus, how do you go about doing that? What makes you go, today this is gonna be the menu of what we're gonna do, like what makes you do that? Building menus were, was very difficult for me. Like, especially because I was, trying to change my menus every week so that you don't get bored of your food, right? Especially when you're eating clean, I don't want you to be bored of your food, right? Right. So constantly finding a new way to switch things up. So I have so much cookbooks. I go through cookbooks all the time. And honestly, like when I'm building up my menu, I'm like, okay, you need to have a chicken, uh, you have fish, mm -hmm. and you have a straight vegan or vegetarian meal. Let's, let's start, so you know, I start, I start taking veggies, like I have a list of, of veggies and I have a, a list of my protein and a list of my carbs. And I will pull one, I'll put it together and like, okay, now what kind of sauces can you add in? But I want all my menu to kind of be cohesive together, you know what I mean? So I'm not gonna be having like some weird, like, I don't know, like I'm not gonna be having meatloaf on it while I have like a spicy shrimp on it, you know what I mean? Like I don't feel like, everything flows together so um normally i would spend like a few hours each week creating my menus pulling things together and then i would also throw it back to my audience throw it back to my clients like all right you guys rate the food from last week mm -hmm. what do you guys think about this for this week or go to instagram do polls on instagram and and give people the option like you know spicy shrimp or sweet or you know what i mean like just giving everyone Getting the feedback from other people I found was very helpful, especially because I was creating 
menus every single week so I couldn't just take my own opinion anymore like after the first month I was like okay no, <laughs> right. Right. let's ask the people that what they want type of thing and, and honestly it just made things so much easier and then I started like kind of when you get to like 20 menus you, you can almost start picking and choosing things off of the menu to recycle and revamp into making new menus right so how important would you say it is to like obviously you said you read a lot of cookbooks how important and just giving advice to people is it to study that craft and understand it i mean people would go it's just food how much do i really need to read but what would you say to that cooking is like okay, studying the craft that is, is difficult okay so for cooking i would say right because i did, i'm not a culinary student but i did apply you know what i mean I did apply. I did get in. That's good. Uh, right? Yep. You know? It's something. It's so, good. you know, like, I, 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 I've double-dabbled. You know what I mean? I've done a few cooking classes here and there. Um, but I feel like it's, it's also the experience you have with cooking. You know what I mean? So, if you are a person who didn't grow up in the kitchen, like, it has to be something you also enjoy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, people are going to taste if your food. And if you don't put love into it, if you're not enjoying it while you're cooking it or while you're preparing it, people are going to be able to taste that. Absolutely. Like, I can, I know for a fact when my dad is has made Aki and Saltfish and he's unhappy, I can taste it. <laughs> right. What is this? <laughs> right, 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 right. Father. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so studying it, uh, understanding, like, again, if you're going to do new things, if you're going to be stepping outside of your box, if you are, again, if you're going to be doing it for other people and not just for yourself, yeah, you know, studying it and understanding it, it is important because you want to make sure that you're giving people things at the correct levels, you know what I mean? Like the correct temperature levels, you know, understanding things so that it's still safe for people to eat. I think it's very important for you to know and understand and, and to study and to be able to be more diverse and be constantly be on your feet you know what i mean the moment you get comfortable yeah, absolutely no, right? I, I get that right so i feel like studying and then put what by studying and by reading the cookbooks i'm pushing myself out of my boundaries absolutely to try something new so i feel like that is the probably the, like the most important part of it is like by studying you're you're evolving still yeah in terms of the word to you passion what does that mean to you? Like when I say passion, obviously with what you're doing. Yeah. Passion, passion to me equals love. You know what I mean? Like I'm passionate about my family. I'm passionate about my friends. I'm passionate about food. Like I, it's, it's a real, it's a real love that I have when it comes to, when I say the word passion, like passion is not something you could just throw around for a, you know, really dilly type of thing. Um, so you think it's very important to be passionate if you're going to do what you're doing in terms of food and cooking for people? I feel like you have to be passionate about what you're doing for anything, really, yeah. truly. Yeah, because I, I think, like, people say, oh, you know, I just want to start a cooking business just because I need to make some money on the side. Well, like, how are you don't? Like, <laughs> right. or, like how would you don't? Right. You know what I mean? Because there's other ways that you can make money on the side that you don't necessarily have to be passionate about or that you don't have to be, you don't have to put, like... Food, you put yourself in it. You know what I mean? Like, I, food is is like art to me. You know what I mean? An artist has to put their passion behind their painting. Right. You know? Has to put their passion behind their sketch or at like um, a barber or a hairdresser. They're artists to me. Right. You know what I mean? You have to be passionate. The, the, the best ones are the passionate ones. Right. That's, that's 100% true. 100%. Right. And just just in regards, uh, as we're talking about passion, I was gonna ask you, how important is plating for you? Ah, uh, <laughs> see, me and plating, right? Because you know why I'm asking that? Because I know some people cook. I cook too. Mm -hmm. I, I know people that cook, but they can't plate. Yeah. If you get what I'm saying. So yeah. I wanted to know if for you, how important is it? Yeah. So uh, plating is important if it depends on. What the occasion is right like if it's a wedding obviously your plating is important you know what i mean if you're giving a sit down meal and you're handing someone a plate right 
Plating is important. It, for meal prep, is plating important? No. No. So, okay. So, I guess you would say based on venue to venue kind yeah. of thing, which would make the most sense. Am I the best plater? No. I have people that plate for me. Okay. Well, you that's know good. what I mean? So, like, when I'm catering uh, weddings and stuff like that, I may be, I'm the main cook, but then I have someone else doing my, my plating for me. Even when I'm doing a large event where I'm, my food is being packaged, I may be cooking, but I'm not packaging you know what I mean? Like, you have to know your strengths in any business, you know, in, in anything you do. I know what my strength is, and then I can lean on someone else with their strength. Right. What are your, for us viewers, what are your signature dishes? Like, what will we know Miss King for? Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Um, Miss King, for sure. Okay, one of my signature dishes I came up with, and, and it's been... I introduced it to my family, it's two things. Well, a few things, okay. Oxtail shepherd's pie. Ooh, walk us through that. All right. Take me on that walk. Again, this is, this is again, one of my favorite, one of my mashups again, you know what I mean? Born in Canada, sea shepherd's pie, you know? What is this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's going on here? Oh, meat, potatoes, right. okay, cool. Much vegetables, all that, yeah. Right? But how can I make this Caribbean? How can I make this where I could put a shepherd's pie in front of my Caribbean household where they're like, okay, let's let's try this try out. out. Right. So I came up with an oxtail shepherd's pie. So I would cook down my oxtail the same way, debone it. So you debone it first or no, after? after. Okay. Yeah, there's so much flavor in the bone. True, very true. Right? Cook it down with the bone. It's a process. It sounds like a lot. It's a process. Because the way the oxtail is, it, it, okay. It's right, a reason. process. Right. But... When you put so much time into that type of process and the passion and love, you know when you take that first bite, you're just like, yo. 100%. Oh, what is this right now? That like, already sounds crazy right? to me. With the like, crust, and I'm just thinking about it, yeah. So, cook down that oxtail, you know, whip up that, that um, the mashed potatoes, and just cook it down like, like a shepherd's pie. But I'm telling you, it's the gravy from the oxtail mixed with the mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. All right. Cranberry, sorrel cranberry sauce. How do you, how do we even go about that? How does that even work? I want to hear about that. So, I would, obviously don't give away the gems. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is on my YouTube channel. Though, okay, so okay. Give away the gems. Okay. But um, again, Jamaicans. Right. Sorrel, favorite drink to drink, in the holiday season. Right. Absolutely. I've been making sorrel since I was kid like five years old i don't even know probably be younger straining off the sorrow with my mom and stuff right and i've always loved the flavor of it like you know they used to give me like the non-alcoholic version whatever and i'm like okay you know what else can this go with though right. so i started putting it with like boiling it down and reducing it and putting it on top of ice cream why not oh it's different right yeah throw some strawberries in there. what does that taste like yeah like habit yeah, yeah okay so okay <laughs> So then I was like, you know, the holiday season was coming up. Everybody was making cranberry sauce. I'm like, cranberry sauce is so, like, whatever. I'm like, what else is for that? Christmas. <gasps> sorrel cranberry sauce. Oh, interesting. So I make my batches of sorrel. Mm -hmm. I make a few batches that are non-alcoholic. And then I make my, and then I cook it down with the cranberries. And we got a sorrel cranberry sauce. Okay. You heard that? And with that being said, we're going to come right back. We're going to take a quick break. Um, and we're going to dive a little bit more into Miss King's Kitchen. In the meantime, as I said, shout out to Alpha Pack. Check out www.alphapackhub.ca. Hit that subscribe button. Like. Let's oh, hey. Funny to see you there. I'm just making some food really quick. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Fat Guys TV. Go check us out at Fat, Fat Guys TV at Instagram. And also, we want to let you know that if you want to check the website, go to nocturnalradio.com. And then click on the logo for Fat Guys TV. Got great dishes, things that are personalized. You guys are going to love it. Stay tuned. All right, and we're back. So we were just touching on, you know, how people like food. And we were discussing different I ideas and the way things are made and stuff. I wanted to ask you a random question. Yeah. How is steak supposed to be cooked? <laughs> I had to ask you. Hey, you know, go for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me personally, it's medium rare. Okay. 
That's me personally. Sound like mine too, but I just thought it's medium asking. rare. You know what I mean? Because if you're gonna do it well done, like just go eat some roast beef. You know why I'm asking that? You know why I'm gonna ask that. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. I was gonna say, <laughs> how and do you course, cater to them? And this is for that you ha you can't eat the meat like that. Anyway, oh, like <laughs> I like sushi. Can you imagine me having like sashimi around Jamaicans? They're they just would like, never touch that. Can I? <laughs> what? You're not cooking? <laughs> I know it's supposed to be eating raw. Yeah. Nah, sir. Mm -mm. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a problem. Right. Um, so when it came to our steak, obviously we all grew up with it being like well done, burnt. charcoal burnt, you know? <laughs> but then my dad, as when I first started getting to Food Network, my dad also got into Food Network too. It was like our thing, you know, and come home from come home from school, he comes home from work, me and him were watching Food Network. And there was this one chef, this black chef from Toronto, we had a barbecue show. I forgot what his name is right now. We had a barbecue show. Yeah. So I feel like my dad trusted him. He was black, he was West Indian. Right. He was barbecuing. So we started like following him, bottom of his cookbook, and then my dad slowly started going from like well done, you know, and started slowly medium. Right. A touch. Look a touch. So like me, my dad, and my brother, all of us are are medium well now. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. Yeah, medium well. Medium well is still not bad, That's depending not, no. on the cut, Yeah, right? my dad is more medium well. But depending on the cut, too. Yeah. Right? I'm I'm pretty much always medium rare. Okay. My dad's like, no, he sticks in the medium well or just medium, which is great. Right. Um, and we slowly try to do that for our family. Slowly. Slowly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, put the back on the barbecue. Put the... Put the I, I think I think for a chef, and that's why I'm asking yeah. you, for a chef, I think the most like disrespectful thing is after you finish cooking it, yeah, you prepare it, you put it out, yeah. Somebody's like, you gotta put it back on. Yeah, like, I don't want it like that. Yeah, Have, like oh gosh, <laughs> I mean, even like the hamburgers, like at, at family events, right. like, the way they used to use break, be able to break them in half the way they cook them so long. I'm like, you guys, it's 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 okay. <laughs> like you know right. what I mean? Right. And um, the thing is, if they actually just took the chance to taste it. It would bring them to a different place. Like, you know what I mean? It's like an aha moment. Yeah, like I've never had it this way. Wow, this is the first time. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. You know, um, in terms of like uh, shows, mm -hmm. we understand we've been on a show. Can you kind of talk to what show you were on and what that experience is like? We'll kind of dive into that a little bit more. Well, I was on Wall of Chefs, and to put it out there, even one. like Food Network, Wall of Chefs, right. and like just to put the like you know sprinkles on top. I was the first episode of the brand new show, That's Wall of Chefs, mm -hmm. right? So think about it. They take the whole season, and I was the best episode, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I'm not going to say, obviously there's other people, but like, let's be honest, my personality would probably uh, yeah, rise yeah, to yeah, that yeah, point, yeah. right? So I was on Wall of Chefs, which is a Food Network show, um, and it was it's a, it has a very similar layout to Chopped. So I don't know if anyone's watched Chopped before, but yeah, it always yeah. starts off with like, you know, four. And then you kind of go. Every round, yeah. someone gets. You know, eliminated until there's two, and then they do the final round, which is normally like a dessert round or something like that, yeah. right? So while Chefs was similar with that layout, your first round was your crowd pleaser. So they, it was whatever you are, your staple. So for my staple was my jerk shrimp. Ooh, okay. My jer jerk shrimp with a mango slaw. Yeah. Yeah. Fire. Homemade jerk sauce mm -hmm. from scratch. Okay. Made on the show. Yep. You give all the you give all the ingredients or no. Well, okay, I was gonna say like no, yeah. You tell them a dash of this. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but let's be honest. If you come from a true West Indian household, you know that we don't know measurements. I test. Yeah, right. It's just like, Grandma, how much you put in this? You 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 not see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, and you're like, okay. Yeah. Basically, right. right. Um. So, yes, I was on Wallace. Uh, first round. And the second round was. You had to cook with, like, it was from a fridge, and it was like, you have to use these four ingredients type of thing. And it was like leeks, ricotta cheese, sriracha. It was random. Yeah. It was very random. Made it through that round as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Got a little nervous, though. If you watch the episode, you'll know. Go back and check that episode. Go check that episode. Yeah. Things got caught on fire a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was a little bit of running in the studio right. and everything like that, but don't worry. We got past that. Okay. All right. We got past that. And then the final round was restaurant quality. 
Uh, so uh, one of the chefs would bring out an item. And she's like, okay, this is the item that's in my restaurant and kind of give us a version of this. Okay. In your, your take. Okay. So. What was your most difficult round? That round. Okay, the final round. The final round. Right. Because I never cooked a live lobster before. Yeah. That was my first time ever cooking, but I cooked lobster. I've never cooked a full. What was that experience like? Live lobster. <laughs> like, I, I just brought it back to it again. I'm so blessed to be West Indies. Because <laughs> we season everything. Right. We over season. That's right. probably one of our problems at times, right? Is we mm, over season, much, right. right? So, the first thing I did was season the pot mm. of water, right? So, so they come around, they're like, well, what are you doing? We're seasoning the water. They're like, season the water, you know, I'm cutting up my onion, putting the onion in the away. You know, they're like, what the hell? So already, the lobster was already going to come out yeah. on a certain type of level because it's already seasoned. Of course. You know what I mean? So uh, I would definitely say that was probably my most difficult one because that's when you're like, $10,000 is on the line mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. It's just you and the person. Right. That's right now. And then you have 12 chefs staring at you the whole time. Twelve. Pressure. Pressure. And like these are chefs that are on Food Network, that have shows on Food Network that I've been watching since I was a kid. Right. You know what I mean? So the pressure was on. The pressure was on. But watch the episode. And it's not a difficult episode to find. It's the first episode of Wall of Chefs. No, that's amazing. That's amazing. Watch it. I'm telling you guys, you'll have a, you'll, you'll have at least you're going to be entertained. So for yourself, what did that do for you in terms of just your confidence level, the experience it did, and what it did for you in terms of, I can do this, let me move on, you know what I mean? Confidence, yeah, like, I remember walking out of that studio and there were so many other things going on in my life at that point in time too, you know what I mean? Cause like, it's our life. We have, there's, there, there's always 10,000 things going on all at the same time, good and bad, you know what I mean? So I remember coming out of the studio that night and being like, I just spent the last 12 and a half hours in, in, a, in a real studio with like cameras and, and producers and chefs and girl, stop. I'm the shit. That's what you this. said. Right? <laughs> exactly right. Stop this. Right. If you want this, it's yours. How badly do you want it? That show that I always dreamed about, that I've always wanted, no longer became like a what if. It's when is it happening? We're putting it to play. You know what I mean? So, yeah, boost of confidence. Up, up, up. But humbling all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because when you get to that stage and you see how big it is, it brings you back down to be like, if you want this, you have to work for this. Right. This is not something that's going to come fly by. No, no, no. But if you want it, you can get it. But it's how hard are you truly going to work for it now? Absolutely. And just in regards to um, the work ethic that you have to have in terms of the field that you're in, because there's lots of competition, what would you say to that? Consistency is huge, right? And I'm not... I, I Listen... I'm still growing. I'm still having growing pains right now. You know what I mean? And consistency has always been one of my one of my things that I have to work through as well, right? But being consistent, especially in this industry, where you're trying to, one, always be one step ahead of other people and to show your your audience and your customers that you're you're still here with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's why they like, so if I'm not posting my workouts, if I'm not posting my food that I'm eating, how am I to be telling people like, this is how you should eat or to buy my food and those type of things, right? So it's being consistent on, on like all those rounds of like coming up with new menus, uh, reaching back out to your clients, you know, um, at, talking about their own progress and those type of things, being personable, being personable, letting people see the true you. I think it's, 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 it's huge. Absolutely. And just in terms of, like, obviously, like you said, the work ethic and consistency, for yourself, what's the vision? Where do you see yourself? How, like, 
let's say five years from now, where do you see it? From everything you've gone through. Yeah. So now. Five years from now, you know, I'm, I'll tell you, so right now I'm currently, I'm taking a step back in revising the business, right? Again, I, I feel like when I first started Miss King's Kitchen, at least this portion of Miss King's Kitchen, it, I jumped into it because it was COVID time. People were asking for the food and I just jumped. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, there, there was a demand and I'm here to supply. That was it. You know what I mean? So I just jumped. Now I'm taking kind of a step back and being like, okay, what is the actual, what is the goal here? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? And what is, what is that need that you're filling? That I'm feeling, right? So, next five years, cookbook, meal prep, like how helping people become healthier. You know what I mean? Um, healthier through the food they're eating, healthier from their their daily mindset, their exercises, their motivation. I want to be that person that people can turn to. You know, and if it's turning to me for my to purchase my food or to purchase my books or to get a little motivation from me, I want to be that person. You know what I mean? So without being on like my my YouTube platform, having like you know talks and those type of things, my talk show and like just being being that person where people can turn to be like, you know what, I want to help people get started. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes getting started is the hardest thing to do. Right. So I just want to be that person where people can turn back and hit me up, or, or look at look at me and be like, she 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 did it. You know, when she got started. So. No, that, that's amazing. Um, just for yourself, how important is it for you to see somebody satisfied after they eat your food? How um, important is that for you? That's one. It, it, if you are not satisfied after you <laughs> eat my food, I'm concerned. Yeah, because like, the reason why I'm asking, not to cut you up, but you know what I, you know why I'm asking yeah. that because I know sometimes if I cook, yeah, you kind of wait to see, <laughs> like, like what, right? <laughs> and that's why sometimes, okay, so when I'm at events where my food is being served, like, and I'm there, like you're creeping. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm like I am that creepy person. Yeah. Like, who's that behind the pillar? Like, you know, like right, you know right, I mean? yeah. that's me. Right. You know what I mean? I need to see you from the first bite. Like from the first bite, if I see your face, like you know, like, oh. I'm like, okay, here right. we go. Right. So yeah, I I need you to be satisfied. You know, I, I want you to be happy. I only want you to be satisfied. I want you to be happy. I want you to eat, take that bite and feel like. Also, some joy just came in. Oh, well, ab absolutely. Know? I think that's very rewarding, especially yeah. when you're cooking. Because, again, it's, it is a personal thing for people. So to see people like, okay, this is good. I could definitely eat from her again. You know what I mean? Right. And I think if you can get to the Caribbean market first, you can get to any market. Right. I, in my opinion. Because they're, they're <laughs> the rough. The toughest they're critics. They're so tough. Right. They're so tough. Like, I feel like, you know, if I give a jerk chicken to someone who doesn't know jerk chicken, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh my gosh, the spices are so amazing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Go give it to my uncle. He'd be like, so you didn't smoke it? <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> so you, well, you, you, you use the store-bought seasoning? Mm, maybe yeah. you taste it. You yeah. know? So, like, for sure. They're picking at it. Oh, they're picking at it, yeah. you know, just... <laughs> You didn't put no brown in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chicken look white. Too. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, and just kind of touching on your future, what other things can we kind of look for from you? I know you said cookbook, obviously the meal prep. What other ideas do you have? Are you doing motivational speaking? What so, you know, I do a little motivational speaking in the mornings on my on my personal page, which is Cola King. Cola King, check that out. Uh, underscore Cola King. And so whenever I do my workouts, I always, I, I'll show everyone like my sweaty, uh, uh, workout picks because I feel like it's important for people to also know like listen it's not glamorous you guys you got to put in the work to get results you right. know what I mean so and then I always normally do a quick little motivational talk um I would love to get back into like motivational speaking in general you know what I mean like um conferences and to speak but I feel like also that comes with having a, a little bit more experience and a little bit more knowledge on certain parts for me like so going back to school right now for health and wellness as well you know what I mean to make sure I have that education portion of it so I can speak on that with my experience 
Oh, you know? So, like, just having the full package. That's going to be well-rounded. I was going to say, and they kind of coincide the food and yeah. the healthy living and lifestyle. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, last question, just on the food portion. They're kind of just going all over the place. Mm-hmm. Is it, would you say at a certain point you should cut out meat? Or would you say that's like a myth type of thing? Because that seems to be people's big thing now with wellness. Removing meat on that sort of thing, protein-based yeah. and going all plant-based. What do you think about that? You know, one, I haven't fully studied it to say that like, yeah, you should cut out meat or, you know what I mean? If your doctor says that you need to do it for your <laughs> right. own life, you know, for your own health, then maybe it's something you should explore for you. Mm-hmm. Um, not for me. No, no, no. But I do think it's important to have a well balanced mm. lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So do I eat meat every day? No, I don't. Um, I, you know, I have my seafood just, I have straight vegetarian days. I, at least once a week I'll have a straight vegetarian day. Right. Like there's no meat. That's good. Period. You know what I mean? And it's not even that difficult. It's really not that difficult, but I think having a well balanced balanced diet is super important so not necessarily taking meat out completely but making sure that you are still touching upon all the food groups making sure that you are having the right amount of nutrients and vitamins and you know your veggies your fruits and not so much carbs and you know what i mean like just making sure you're, you're still being healthy in what you're eating and making sure it's balanced i think that's awesome the, that one point there about being balanced because I think that's people's problem. They overindulge. They don't stick to like one thing. They overindulge in one thing. And then that's when people go, you're, you're eating too much of one thing. Right. That's probably the problem, right? Right. And even being balanced, like, when, like, having a, being, having like a, I feel like when people go into diets, this is my, this is why diets, I feel like, never work. And so I feel like meal prep is completely different from diets, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I feel like diets are so difficult, right? Because you're not balanced. You're just stripping yourself away of all the things you could love and enjoy. Shocking yourself completely. Shocking your whole body. And then all of a sudden, you get to that that weight that you want to lose. And you're like, all right, well, we'll come back, pizza. (laughs) Come back. You know what I mean? And then then the weight comes back and you get depressed and this. And it's like a whole cycle. It goes back and forth, go back and forth. When you're eating balanced, you know what I mean? You can still have those times where you have those chips once in a while. Or you have the pizza, you know what I mean? Because all those other days, you're eating balance. You're balancing with, you, you know, your, your portions. You know what I mean? You're balancing the amount of meat you're eating to the amount of seafood, to the vegetables, your carbs. Balance. Right. Balance is key. No, definitely. I think that's a major point. Um, just in regards to if somebody wants to be your client, where can they, where can they reach out to you? You can reach me at Miss King's Kitchen IG. Uh, hit me up. You can DM me, or you can always send me an email, Miss King's Kitchen at gmail dot com. And then, yeah, we we start from there. You then you deliver the food. Is that how it works? So right now, I deliver the food. Wow, that's right? awesome. It you get that special touch. You know what I mean? More times I do deliver it. If I'm not delivering it, then it's one of my staff delivering it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's perfect to know. Any last things you want to kind of plug in? Things we should look out for. Go crazy. <laughs> Jeez, things to look out for, plug in. Listen, a lot is going to be coming out for 2022. You know what I mean? We're doing a revamp, and we're going to be coming back stronger, harder, better, um, and ready to help get you started on your journey of food. That's what Miss King's Kitchen is here for, um, to get you ready, to get you started, and to keep you going. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So that consistency is coming. Absolutely. No, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming from so far to this place. Right? <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, everybody, please go check out Miss King on all platforms, as she said. Go be a client. The food will be great. You're going to love it. Um, we also want you again. I'm going to say it again three to four, five, six, seven more times. Please hit that subscribe button like please engage let us know give us feedback if there's things you want to see somebody that you want to see please reach out let us know again thank you very much we're signing off till next time this is better business